here with Play Through Board Games, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Skull and Shackles set, specifically the final scenario of the basic adventure path. In this scenario, what we're doing is confronting the Pirate Council, whose word is law in the Shackles, the region of the world where this game takes place. We have to convince them that we aren't their enemies, even though we've bent a few rules here and there. So let's see how this actually happens in the gameplay. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy. This is the Black Flag scenario card. It is the last scenario in the basic adventure path here. The general rules here are that we are facing off against the Pirate Council and their henchmen, enemy ships, and we have to convince them that we are not their enemy, that we're not being too defiant of their rules for the shackles, and if we succeed at doing this, then we will have completed the basic adventure path, and we will reap the rewards. For the scenario, the rewards are that each plunder card under our ship gets us another random card of the same type from the box. So, for example, if I have an item under my ship, I would get a random item. If I have a weapon, I would get a random weapon, and so on and so forth. Recall, too, that you gain these plunder cards from defeating ships. So, for every henchman we manage to defeat, we will gain a plunder card. Because we are facing off against enemy ship henchmen which means we'll be drawing random ships from the box and trying to defeat them. So that's the overview of the Black Flag scenario here. We'll take a look at the locations and then we'll get started with our playthrough. We've encountered the Lonely Island before. This location is a location where if you're the only character you get to add 1d4 to any checks you're attempting. When closing, you must banish an ally, again, to represent the lonely nature of the Lonely Island. If you succeed at closing the location, you draw a random ally from the box and recharge it, so you do get something in exchange for the ally you have to get rid of. So that's the breakdown of the Lonely Island here. Another familiar location is the Fog Bank. We encountered this, the monsters and so on here get shuffled around if you actually have a power that allows you to examine cards in the location deck so you never know what order you will encounter anything in this deck to close the deck you have to recharge your hand which means putting it back on the bottom of your deck and it must be at least one card in your hand in order to do this closing condition here so when permanently closed you draw the same number of cards you recharge so you, again, similar to the Lonely Island, you do in fact get something back for your trouble. Another place we'll be looking at here is the coastline. At the coastline, if you acquire a boon with a pirate or swashbuckling trait, you may immediately explore again. So depending on what's in this deck, that may actually help us get through a lot faster. On closing, you have to succeed at a Wisdom or Perception 6 check or banish a card that has a pirate or swashbuckling trait. So those are the ways this can be closed. You may recharge a card that has a pirate or swashbuckling trait from your discard pile if you actually succeed at closing the location. So that is the coastline. In the two-player playthrough here, there's one more location that's called Scar Bay. This is probably the nastiest location out of all the locations because it turns all the monsters into undead monsters and they are immune to certain traits. So it's possible, depending on what spells or weapons or so on you're using, that you might have some trouble defeating these enemies. On closing, you have to succeed at a Wisdom or Divine 8 check, which would be good for Alhazra. However, she's not as proficient at defeating enemies, so I might have to take a joint approach with both of my characters at this location in order to succeed. Before closing, you are dealt combat damage equal to the number of monsters remaining in the location deck. So if we haven't defeated enough monsters we might have to take some damage on this closing condition here when we fulfill the closing condition in any case those are the four locations going to show you my pirate ship and then we'll get going here so this is my pirate ship that I've selected for this scenario it has the ability to allow me to discard a card from the blessings deck to add 1d12 to a check to defeat a ship, provided that check has the swashbuckling trait. I'm hopeful that this will make defeating this scenario easier because I will be encountering ships as the henchmen for the scenario, so provided I can add the swashbuckling trait to the check to defeat those ships, I should have a better time at it. Anyway, that's my rationale behind choosing this ship. Now we will get going with the actual playthrough. 
the first thing I need to do to start off here is determine what sort of card will be going under my ship as plunder to begin this scenario. So I've rolled a 4. A 4 is a random item from the box. I will now retrieve and place that under my ship. And then we will begin play with Alahazra, and she will be starting at the Lonely Island location. At the beginning of each turn, as always, I flip a blessing. So in this case, I have flipped the blessing of Pharasma from the blessing deck. And I will begin exploring the Lonely Island location here. So what she does encounter here is called the Belaying Pin. It says for your combat check, reveal this character, use your strength or melee skill, plus 1d4. You may additionally discard this card to add your strength die. So for Alahazra, weapons, as you may know from my previous playthroughs, are not the best things. However, she may try to acquire this because she has to roll a relatively low number. Let's see how we do. So the good thing about the Lonely Island location is that you may roll a d4 to try and attempt a check in addition to whatever other die you would roll. So although Alahazra's strength and melee is only a d4, she gets to roll an additional d4. And in this case, she succeeds at acquiring the belaying pin. At this point, Alahazra will discard a blessing from her deck to allow her to keep exploring and see what she encounters. She encounters a spell Force Missile here. So it has the Arcane trait, Magic, Force, Basic, and a number of other things to acquire. She would have to have an Intelligence Arcane check. Her Intelligence is a D6, so again she may add in a D4 because she's at the Lonely Island location and attempt to acquire this. So 2 and 4 is 6. She does, in fact, get Force Missile. If she were to ever cast Force Missile, however, she would have to banish it because she does not have the ability required, namely the Arcane ability. She will play one more Blessing to allow her to continue to explore this location. And she has encountered the enemy ship henchman. So there's a little bit of special wording here that you can see on the enemy ship. It says, Summon and Encounter a Random Ship. If you do not defeat the summoned ship, the enemy ship is undefeated. If the summoned ship is defeated, you may seize it. The enemy ship is also defeated. You may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from. So we have some special decisions to make here as to whether we would want to seize the ship if we should succeed at defeating it. Failure to defeat the ship means we have to discard the 1d6 cards from the blessing deck. So there's a little bit of a high-stakes game here. Let's see which ship we'll be encountering and how Alahazra fares against it. So the ship I drew randomly from the box here is called the Wormwood. It's a basic ship. To defeat it, there's a Dexterity Acrobatics 9 check, which Alahazra has almost no chance of doing, seeing as her Dexterity is a D4, or a Wisdom Survival 7 check. Her wisdom die is a d8, so this represents the best chance we have here. Recall, too, that she can add the d4 in, so we have a d8 and a d4. And finally, what we're going to do is have Celtiel try and help us out here by playing his Blessing of the Gods to his discard pile and giving an additional d8. So we may succeed, hopefully, at defeating this. We'll roll and find out what we get. Okay, so the die rolls here are a 1, a 4, and a 6. So we do succeed at the required 7 to defeat the Wormwood. If we look at the when commanding the ship effect, you may discard a card from the Blessings deck to add 1d12 to your check to defeat a bane or a ship, which is slightly better than having to have the swashbuckling trait as our current Shackles pirate ship has as a requirement. So we will seize this ship. It becomes our new active ship for this scenario only. Because we have successfully defeated this, we will banish the enemy ship card there. And we also get to roll on a plunder table to see what our additional plunder card will be for succeeding at beating the ship. So let's roll. I rolled a 1. In this case I will add a random weapon under the Wormwood and that will conclude Alahazra's turn as soon as she makes the check to close this location, if she can. 
Unfortunately, closing the Lonely Island requires that you actually have an ally present in your hand, so we do not have an ally to banish at this moment in time with Alahazra, so she will simply reset her hand and end her turn, and play will then pass to Seltiel. Forgot to reset Alahazra's hand. I'm discarding Force Missile here, and I will draw some more cards to fill out her hand. Do so in order to draw another card from her deck. So she now may draw the Jinx Eater from her deck, which is an ally, and she also has to draw one more card to fill out her hand of six, and she draws the Ruby of Charisma, which allows her to roll her Charisma die instead of another die on a non-combat check. So she's doing fairly well now, and we will move over to Seltiel and see how he's going to fare at the Frog Bank location. Okay, so I'm at the Fog Bank here, and I flip over the top card of the Blessings deck, and then I may explore the location with Seltiel. He encounters a skeleton. So the difficulty to defeat is 8. If the check has piercing or slashing, the difficulty is increased by 3. So we do have one weapon that will allow us to not use piercing or slashing, namely the Morning Star. You may use this card as if it has the bludgeoning trait instead of the piercing trait. So we will reveal this card to use our strength or melee die, which is a d8 plus 3 for melee, plus another d8 for our check to defeat the skeleton. So we rolled a 7, but mercifully we have the plus 3 bonus to melee, so the skeleton is in fact defeated and gets banished from the play area. Now, he does have a ally here, the Surgeon, that would allow him to keep exploring. Since the Surgeon can only heal one card worth of damage, he's going to use the Surgeon and keep on exploring here. He encounters the spell Detect Magic. It's an Intelligence Arcane Wisdom Divine. So his arcane is a d8 plus 3, so there's a very high likelihood that he will acquire this. So he does, in fact, acquire this. In this spell, he may use this card to examine the top card of his location deck by discarding it. If he discards it and he encounters a blessing or a card with a magic trait, he may immediately encounter it. Otherwise, he must return that card to the top of the deck. So, we encounter the Pirate Council. Now, there's a little bit of a special text here on the Fog Bank location. So, we used a power that allows us to examine a card in the location deck, namely the Detect Magic, so we have to shuffle the location deck. However, we have learned a valuable piece of information, namely that the Pirate Council, the main villain here, is in the Fog Bank location. At this point, I have shuffled the Fog Bank deck as per the rules of the Fog Bank, and I may attempt to recharge my spell here. So I have to roll an Arcane or Divine 4. I roll a 6, plus I get plus 3 for being Arcane, so I do in fact recharge Detect Magic. Seltiel has a Detect Magic spell in his hand, in addition to the one he acquired. So he may try and see if he can get anything else out of this deck about information as to what's in it, or perhaps even gain a card. So he will play that spell, and then he may look at the top card here. If it is a blessing or has the trait he is looking for, he may encounter it. It is an enemy here, so the monster will be shuffled back in as well. And we may again attempt to recharge detect magic, so I will make that attempt to recharge really briefly. I succeed, and then I will shuffle the location, and we'll be right back. At this point, Seltiel only has these two weapons in his hand, so he will be resetting his hand and ending his turn. On resetting his hand, he draws the Falcada. He draws the Blessing of the Gods here. And he draws a spell called Arcane Armor that would help him prevent some damage from being dealt to him. So that is the end of Seltiel's turn. We will now move over to Alahazra, who is still at the Lonely Island, 
and we'll see if she can close out her location successfully by using the Jinx Eater she drew at the end of her previous turn. Play now returns to Alahazra at the Lonely Island. We flip a blessing from the blessing deck, and we will continue our exploration in hopes of being able to make it through this deck. We encounter a weapon known as the Main Gauche here. It is a strength or melee 5 to acquire. Again, we've discussed how Alahazra's strength is a d4, and we've also noted that we may add an additional d4 to a check at this location. So that would allow Alahazra to roll 2d4 in an attempt to acquire this. So let's see how she does. 2 will not net us the main gauche, so we simply remove it from the deck. At this point, Alahazra has the opportunity to continue exploring should she so choose. However, her only means of doing so is the Jinx Eater, which she is saving in an attempt to actually banish the Jinx Eater to close the location. So at this point, she will end her turn. It is now Celtiel's turn here at the Fog Bank. We flip up a Blessing of the Gods. And he has to make the decision as to whether or not he will continue here and risk encountering the Pirate Council, or whether he should move elsewhere. In my opinion, the choice is fairly clear, and we will be relocating to the coastline in order to explore there, and hopefully succeed at closing that location. Celtiel is now at the coastline location, and we will flip the top card here, and see what he can do to either acquire or defeat it, in this case acquire. It is a chainmail, a constitution fortitude 3. His constitution here is a d8, so in order to acquire this he has to roll a 3 or better on that d8, and we'll see how well he can do here. We have a pretty good chance at acquiring it, and if we don't, it will not be the greatest tragedy. So we'll roll the d8, and the result here is a 5. So the chainmail is now Celtiel's to have, and he will continue his exploration if possible. In his hand, he does have some options here, namely a blessing. So we flip up the blessing out of his hand and put it in his discard pile, and he may continue to explore the coastline location. We have encountered a thieves tools, dexterity disable 4. Our dexterity is a d6, so we have a chance at acquiring this. We'll roll and see if we in fact do a 5. So we do acquire the thieves tools here. At this point we do not have any cards that would allow us to explore further. Seeing as the thieves tools are more useful at this juncture than the chain mail here, even though it is an armor, we will be discarding the chain mail and that will get us back down to our five card hand and that will end Celtiel's turn. We flip a blessing for Alahazra at the Lonely Island from the blessing deck over there and we continue to explore. She encounters an item called the Onyx of Constitution. The check to acquire this is a constitution check. Unfortunately her constitution is a d6 even with the plus four we have a low chance of actually acquiring this. So the 1d4 in addition will give us some hope. And lo and behold, we rolled a 4 and a 6. So surprisingly, we gain an Onyx of Constitution, which would normally not have been possible. Again, she could continue to explore with her Jinx Eater ally, but she chooses not to because she needs to banish him in order to succeed at closing the location. So she will discard the Onyx of Constitution to her discard pile because she doesn't find it very useful to be able to roll a d6 instead of another item or another check rather. So that will end Alahazra's turn at the Lonely Island and we will go back to Celtiel and see how he fares at the coastline. As Usual, we flip the blessing from the blessings deck before we do anything else, and we explore the location. This card does, in fact, have the pirate trait, 
And if you recall about the coastline, it says if you acquire a boon with a pirate or swashbuckling trait, you may immediately explore again. So in order to acquire this, Celtio would either have to succeed at a constitution fortitude check of four or a charisma diplomacy check of six. His constitution is higher at a d8, so he will attempt to use the constitution die to acquire this particular ally. So we roll, and we roll a 7. So we needed a 4 for the constitution check at the top there. So we do acquire this, and we may immediately explore again. So this is the ability text here. Reveal this card and recharge another card to add 1d6 to your non-combat constitution or intelligence check. Discard this card to explore your location. Add the swashbuckling trait to your non-combat checks. So not bad and we automatically get to explore again as a result of having acquired something with that trait. Confusion is a spell here with the arcane check of six which is what we're interested in because our arcane is a d8 plus three. We will attempt to acquire confusion here. We roll a six so we have straight up acquired the spell. It says discard this to evade a monster, if there is another character or location that character may encounter the monster. After playing this card, you do not have if you do not have the arcane or divine skill, which we do, we would banish the card. At this point, we check our hand to see if there's any other means of continuing to explore. There is the ally we have acquired, namely the captain, so we may use the captain if we so choose to explore, and if we do use the captain we get to add the swashbuckling trait to your non-combat checks during this exploration. So we will discard the captain and explore. We encounter a pirate captain. So this is perhaps the evil version of our ally here, so to speak. Uh, so we need a combat 12 to defeat the pirate captain and it says before you act, recharge card. What we will do is recharge the spell we have drawn, con or acquired rather, Confusion. So when we recharge that, we put that on the bottom of our deck. The difficulty to defeat this is a 12, and after you act, the pirate captain deals two structural damage to your ship. So one of my characters will have to discard two cards should we wish to prevent that structural damage, which we do in my case. So we will attempt to defeat this pirate captain here. In order to do so, we will reveal this card to use your strength or melee die plus 1d8. So we have 2d8 to defeat the pirate captain here. Plus 3 for my bonus to melee combat. So let's roll and see how we fare versus the pirate captain. 5 and 8, so 13 plus 3 is sufficient to defeat the Pirate Captain's 12. After you act, so we, we've acted, the Pirate Captain deals 2 structural damage to our ship. In order to prevent the structural damage, we will discard a couple cards. In this case, Celtiel is going to discard the Thieves' Tools here, and also the arcane armor spell. Before he recharges his or resets his hand rather, he may attempt to recharge a spell from his discard pile. Since arcane armor just went in his discard pile, he will attempt to recharge this. So he must succeed in an arcane 4 check to recharge. So he rolls his d8 and we'll see if he can succeed at the arcane 4 check to recharge. So here we go. 2 plus three for his arcane ability, so we do in fact succeed, not by a very comfortable margin, but we do succeed at recharging that. Then we have to draw two cards to fill out our hand here. So we draw Frostbite is one that we have drawn from our deck, and the second card that we draw is Force Missile, which is another attack spell. So those should come in handy for Celtiel. That marks the end of Celtiel's turn, and play will pass to Alahazra, who is still going on at the Lonely Island, trying to close it. So it is now Alahazra's turn at the Lonely Island. 
We will flip up the top card of the blessing deck. It is a blessing of the gods. She may now explore. She encounters the armor magic buckler. This is a constitution fortitude 6 check. Her constitution is a d6. So she may attempt this check. And she will add in the d4 for being alone here at the Lonely Island. So we'll see how that pans out. 4 and 2 is 6. So she does in fact acquire the magic buckler to her hand. Again, we do not want to discard our lonely ally here, so we will hold on to the Jinx Eater, and we will banish him to successfully close the location on Alhazar's next turn. Play will now pass to Celtil, back where he is. We're back with Celtil here at the coastline, and we will flip the top card of the Blessing deck, and then go on and explore the coastline and see what we shall encounter. All right. So, an enemy ship. Summon and encounter a random ship. If you do not defeat the summoned ship, the enemy ship is undefeated. We will get a random ship really quick. The random ship here is the Sea Chanty. So, Wisdom Survival 6 or Charisma Diplomacy 8. Fortunately, we have a trick up our sleeves because... His Charisma is only a d6, and his Wisdom is a d4 here. So if we look at his card, we have a kind of challenge ahead of us. But, according to the Wormwood way up here, the ship I seized, you may discard a card from the Blessings deck to add 1d12 to your check to defeat a Bane or ship. We will be discarding a card from the Blessings deck, because that strikes me as a better bet than having to potentially discard up to six should we fail per the scenario rules and have to roll to see how many cards we would discard on the blessings thing. So we added a d12 in, plus his charisma die, which is a d6. So a d12 plus a d6 to beat a charisma diplomacy eight here. Let's see if we can do this. So we rolled a ten and a two. So we managed to defeat the Siege Chanty here. Let's see if there's anything we would like about this. Discard a card from the Blessings deck to add 1d12 to your check to acquire Boon. As tempting as that sounds, I think I will let that one pass because this helped me be able to defeat this at all. So we do in fact defeat this henchman. And now we will consider whether we may succeed at closing the location here. Succeed at a Wisdom or Perception 6 check, or banish a card that has a Pirate or Swashbuckling trait. So our Wisdom is a D4, as we just discussed, so we will not be succeeding at that. If we do banish something that has a Swashbuckling or Pirate trait, however, we may close the location. We have a weapon here, the Cutlass, as you can see, has the Swashbuckling trait. So we will banish the Cutlass and close the location. When permanently closed, each character at this location may recharge a card that has a pirate or swashbuckling trait from his discard pile. It should be noted, this was what was left in the deck, by the way, an armor, a dagger, and a enemy, that we get a plunder card now. So we should roll on the plunder table and consult the plunder table as to what sort of card we acquire before we close this. So a d6 roll is a 1, and we get a weapon from the box. I will put that weapon underneath our ship, and we will continue with Alahazra's turn next. Before we start with Alahazra's turn, I did want to mention that due to the closing effect of the coastline, where we may recharge a card from the discard pile with a pirate or swashbuckling trait, Celtil, in fact, chooses to recharge that pirate captain henchman from his discard pile. In addition, he gets to draw one card to make out the complete number of cards in his hand, so this Blessing of Phirasma is the card that he drew from his deck, just by way of keeping you up to speed on what happens when I finished the turn. So let's proceed to Alahazra's turn here, and we will Keep going with a blessing from the blessing deck. 
she may now explore and encounter the final card, which itself is a blessing. So, a divine five. Fortunately for Alhazra, her divine skill is her strongest skill, and she gets to roll a d12 plus two plus a d4 for being the only person here. We will re-roll that since it's stuck on the edge. The roll ended up being a 12 plus 2 plus 2, so we do acquire the blessing of Gozra. And in order to close this location, she will banish the Jinx Eater, as we have been discussing. And she does get to draw a new ally and recharge it from the box, so we get a random ally that gets recharged. And that will be the end of this location. It is now closed. So we have closed two out of the four locations. We know that the Pirate Council is in the Fog Bank, so that only location left is Scar Bay. Because of acquiring the Blessing of Gozra to her hand, Alahazra actually has seven cards in her hand at the end of her turn. So she will be discarding the Magic Buckler to her discard pile in order to get down to the required six card hand limit that she has and then we must decide where we will go with Celtiel on his turn so let's shift over to him and see how he fares at Scar Bay Celtiel is currently at the coastline location so we will flip a blessing from the blessing deck to keep marking the time and we will move over here to Scar Bay now at Scar Bay all non-villain monsters gain the undead trait and are immune to the mental and poison traits. So there are at least four monsters that are not the kind of monster that's a villain or henchman at this location. So these four monsters will possibly be challenging if we have the wrong combination of stuff. But let's explore and see what we get. It is a spyglass. So wisdom, perception... Our wisdom is a d4. We do not have the perception skill, so that would by default also be a d4. So we may roll a d4 and see if we acquire this. Let's roll that so it's in the middle. It's a 3. We do not acquire the spyglass, so that simply goes away. At this point, he does have a Blessing of Phrasma, so we might consider using that to continue while we're here, and we will find out what is next in the deck. It is the enemy ship. I will get a random ship from the box and be right back. Okay, we have a little bit of a challenge here with the ship that I have drawn. It is the Dominator. It's about as intimidating as it sounds. A Wisdom Survival 8 or a Dexterity Ranged 11. Our Dexterity is a D6 with Celtial. Our Wisdom is a D4. So we will be going with a D6 based check here. However, you notice that's a long shot, even from 11 here. So we will do our trick with the Blessing deck here. The Wormwood ship says you may discard a card from the Blessings deck to add 1d12 to your check to defeat a Bane or ship. So we are discarding a card from the Blessings deck, which means we're one step closer to not succeeding. However, there appear to be a decent number of cards left in the Blessing deck. This is about how many there are, just eyeballing it I think will be okay. So we'll hope for the best. So now I may roll a d12 and my d6 to defeat an 11. Let's check my ability to succeed here. 6 and 4 is 10. So that is a sad, sad day for us because we do not succeed. So when we do not succeed we get dealt damage basically equal to the 11 minus 10 so our ship is potentially going to be dealt one damage unless one of our characters discard something to prevent this in this case Alahazra will prevent the damage 
She will discard the spell Fear to her discard pile in order to prevent our ship from taking damage, and then we must see what the penalty is. Here, so if the summoned ship is defeated, you may seize it. The enemy ship is also defeated. You may immediately attempt to close this location. So, if you do not defeat the summoned ship, the enemy ship is undefeated. So, we have not defeated the summoned ship here. The enemy ship is undefeated. And then we have this little wonderful thing. If you fail to defeat an enemy ship henchman, discard 1d6 cards from the blessing deck. So, we will discard that number of cards from the blessing deck here. Two. This may cause us some problems going forward here, but we'll have to see how things turn out. So we discard two cards, one, two, so so we're burning through our deck at a little bit faster rate than I would enjoy, and now we will finish out our turn. At this point on Celtiel's turn, we will be resetting his hand here, and also we have shuffled into the Scar Bay the henchman we failed to defeat. So the card we draw here to reset his hand is a blessing of the gods. So we will use that card on another turn, perhaps, to give us a benefit in some way. Now play will pass to Alahazra, who is now at a close location, the Lonely Island. We will now flip a blessing for Alahazra from the Blessings deck. The piles are about even now for the Blessings deck, so we may have about half of our turns left. She is going to move over to the Scar Bay location and join Celtiel there. So we will look and see what she finds when she searches. Oh, okay, so the enemy ship is back. So we must now draw a different, maybe, random ship from the box and see which one that we get. And Alahazra will be encountering the new enemy ship, and hopefully she will succeed where Celtiel did not. Alright, so now we have drawn our random ship, and it is the Merchantman, a Wisdom Survival 5, or a Perception 7 check. Alahazra's Wisdom is a D8 here, and her best shot at doing this is that, since the Perception skill is non-existent, she would only get to roll a D4 in order to help with that. So, this is her best bet here. She's going to do the special ability of our ship here and discard the top card at the Blessings deck in hopes of adding the d12 to defeat this. So we get our Wisdom of a d8 plus a d12. Furthermore, Celtiel is going to use the Blessing I demonstrated that he had at the end of his previous turn in order to help us out here. So we will discard that blessing to his discard pile and that will add another d8 to our attempt here. So overall we should be in better shape versus this ship than we were in our previous encounter with the enemy ship. Let's take a look. Seven, six, and two so we are in fact in much better condition as far as defeating the merchantman goes. Uh, we really don't have a desire to seize the merchantman when you would roll for plunder. You may discard a card from the blessing deck to choose a type of plunder card instead. So we will simply return that from whence it came. And the enemy ship is now defeated. We may attempt to close our location here, the Scar Bay. In order to close Scar Bay, it says succeed at a Wisdom Divine 8 check. So her Wisdom Divine... Her Wisdom is a D8, her Divine is a D12 plus 2, so she will do that. Furthermore, she has this Blessing, so discard this to add 2 dice to any check to close a location. So she will discard the Blessing of Gozra to give herself a boost here. So she gets... 3d12 to close this since we're using her divine skill. So we'll roll these two and if that is not sufficient, which it already is, we will get to roll a third. So another 12, a 5, and an 8 was what we originally rolled. So 12, 5, and 8 is plenty to succeed at a wisdom or divine 8. 
before closing your adult combat damage equal to the number of monsters remaining in the location deck. So that's where we may have some trouble here. So a zombie, a smuggler, so in fact all of the monsters appear to have survived in this deck since we again encountered the henchmen so early on that we are dealt for combat damage. Fortunately we have something Alahazra can do to mitigate some of this damage. Discard this to reduce damage dealt to you by three. After playing this card succeeded in Arcane or Divine Seven to recharge it instead of discarding. So she only is ultimately hurt for one damage. She will take Fire Blade reluctantly as that damage. She is going to roll her D12 to attempt to recharge the Amulet of Life here. So we'll see if she achieves the required 7. We do, in fact. So we recharge the Amulet of Life, which is all to the good for her. So we have now to draw up to her hand size, which means drawing 4 cards. She draws a Blessing. She draws the spell Aid. She draws the Parrot Ally and another blessing. So we have enough cards in our deck to draw up to her hand size, which means she gets to live to fight another day. The cards that were in the Scar Bay location deck are now removed, seeing as none of them is in fact the villain, which we know is in the fog bank. So then this is closed permanently, and we may end Alahazra's turn. Celtiel is currently at Scar Bay with Alahazra, so he will flip the top card of the Blessing deck here, and he will then move over to the Fog Bank. We are now at the Fog Bank location, so we will flip the top card here. It is a named enemy. These tend to be a little bit nastier. So, Cecilia here, before you act, succeed at a Wisdom or Perception 8 check, the or the difficulty to defeat this is increased by 2. So, we are not likely to succeed at that with our d4, so we're going to roll for formality's sake. And our roll, indeed, is not an 8 or better on a d4, which is impossible. So the check is now a 15. If undefeated, each character, your location, must succeed at a constitution. Fortitude 8 check, or bury the top 1d4 cards of his deck. So... We have a 15 to defeat Cecilia, and we are in a little bit of a bind, but let's see how we can get out of this. So in order to help us out here, we're going to use this ability. Choose a weapon that does not have the two-handed trait and a spell that has the attack trait. When you play one for your combat check, you may recharge the other to add 1d6 and that card's traits to the check. So we will be pulling this off here. We have the Morning Star Mace. So for your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 1d8. So we will use our melee skill and we will be recharging the spell Force Missile. So we get the Magic Arcane Attack Force and Basic traits added to our Morning Star Dice. But more importantly, we get to add a d6, which will hopefully help us tip the balance of this encounter in our favor. So we have 2d8 and then we will gather the d6 that we need as well and we can roll those up. Alhazra is feeling generous in this instance so she is going to play a blessing which will give us an additional d8 to attempt to defeat this big monster. So let's roll all of these dice and see what we achieve here. 7, 10, I bumped this one, so we will re-roll. 5, 15, 19, plus 3 would be more than sufficient to beat Cecilia. So we are, in fact, able to remove her from the deck. Then we may see if we have any means to continue exploring. In our hand, we unfortunately do not. We only have a Morning Star, which we have seen, another weapon, the Falcata, and the spell Frostbite. So what will have to happen is Celtio will draw the two cards he needs to complete his hand size. 
here, so uh, we will take care of that. To complete his turn, he draws the Bracers of Protection and the Longsword and adds them to his hand, and play will now pass to Alahazra, who will be leaving Scar Bay to join us here in the Fog Bank. It is interesting to note that on my turn with Southiel, since I was commanding the Wormwood ship, I could have opted to move from here with Alahazra to the Fog Bank, so I could have taken her along for the ride on our ship. However, I think it's six of one, half dozen of the other in this instance, because she will be moving. So we move her over to the Fog Bank, and we will see what she finds. I recalled with when I defeated the ship with Alahazra that I did not roll on the plunder table, so we will do that. We roll a five on the plunder table, which is an ally, so I will be sure to put that ally underneath our ship. I am sorry for that about the Scar Bay location, however, I did catch it, so better late than never. At this point, we flip a blessing for Alahazra from the deck, the blessings deck, and we will now be able to explore. We, in fact, find the Pirate Council here. So the Pirate Council says that we need a Charisma Diplomacy to engage with them. If undefeated, you may banish one card, plunder card per character to defeat the Pirate Council. So, Charisma Diplomacy here. So, fortunately for us, our Charisma is fairly high, but they also make a steep demand on terms of what kind of Charisma role we need. So, even though we have a D12, she will use a Blessing to increase that to 2D12, which is helpful. And then, in addition to that, she has the spell Aid. So, discard this card to add 1d6 to any check. So, that makes her 2d12 plus 1d6. She may attempt to recharge the spell Aid with a Divine 8. So, we'll roll for that in case things go awry here. A 12. So, the spell Aid will be recharged, which is good for us. So, so 2d12 and dd6 so far, not bad. Um, since it's the final encounter, Celtiel will see if he can add anything. He does not have any blessings, however, so this is where things stand. We roll, and the results are in a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20. Three, so we have very handily convinced the Pirate Council that they should respect us. We do succeed automatically because we just encountered the villain at closing this location. So we do not have to recharge any cards to succeed at closing. We missed out on the spell Black Spot, a Blessing of Phirasma, and a Constrictor Snake, so... For better or worse, that is the end of this scenario. We will get to check the scenario reward here. For each plunder card, gain another random card of that type from the box. So effectively, this is dependent on the plunder we have underneath the plunder card here. So we have those plus an ally. The ally is the swab that I was supposed to draw for having defeated the ship at Scar Bay. So we have our four types of cards. We get another of each of those types. So for the item, we get a Tot Flask. For the ally, we get a Master at Arms. Sounds useful. So that takes care of two of the scenario rewards. And then we have two weapons, so we get two additional weapon cards from the box. A Cutlass and a icy boarding pike plus one. So the icy boarding pike plus one sounds particularly useful. In addition to these rewards, seeing as we have completed the whole path here for Adventure B, we get a skill feat. The skill feat allows me to up one of my character's stats such as dexterity or melee. I will show you my skill feat as well as my character decks next time. This has been a Playthrough Board Games video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.